Christ is my firm foundation The rock on which I stand When everything around me is shaking I've never been more glad That I put my faith in Jesus Cause He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So I still got joy in chaos I've got peace that makes no sense so I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength cause I built my life on Jesus He's never let me down He's faithful
Todd. <laughs> and we're Ted Todd. Ted Todd. <laughs> Good morning, Point Jerk. Good morning. How are we? <laughs> Now we're going to have to figure out if she leaves that part in. I hope she does. I hope so. I hope so, too. Because we are about being real and having fun. We do. And, hey, we just hope that, you know, my name's actually Noah. And And his name is Todd. (laughs) But we just have a couple quick announcements for you, and then we're going to gear into the service more. But first things first, if you are new here, we just want to say... We're so excited you're here. It's Welcome. an amazing choice. Welcome. Welcome. Todd's getting into the spooky vibes yeah. of the season. <laughs> yeah, well, it's October 8th. We're coming it's out. true. We've got, true. What, we got three, four weeks. Still? And so we're so excited that you're here. We've got yeah. a quick gift for you if you're new here. So mm-hmm. put it in the chat. Let us know you're new. And most importantly, we'd love to connect with you. So you yes. can connect by going to pointchurch.net slash, slash connect. connect. Slash. Slash. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to bring everything back to Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> we bring everything back to Halloween That's today. Right. Um, but we would love to connect with you. On that connect card, there's just a lot of simple ways that we want to get your info, not to be weird or creepy, but... <laughs> well, you why you look at me if they're weird? But weird or we just want to connect with you, and that's the way we can connect. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we can connect <laughs> with you. I'm so sorry if you're new here today. Yeah, you were getting not... an experience today. We've had a lot of sugar this morning. Yes, we have. I just had a little orange crush. I'm psyched and ready to go. I just had sugar. Wow, nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're new here, also prayer requests. Yes. We're going to take a serious note if we, we can. Do. We do. We really want to hear your prayer requests. Yes. We yes, want to pray do. for you. We love you. We care about you. And just put that prayer request yeah, down. Letter, letter. Anybody, new, regular. Uh, new time visitor. Yeah, let our readers here. know that you're here. They'll make you feel warm and welcome. What else we got going on? This We've got month? a big thing coming up. A spooky thing. Yes. Todd, do your evil laugh. I can't until you say it. Oh, we have a spooktacular. <laughs> wow, we have a spooktacular. <laughs> we have a spooktacular. <laughs> I should just keep doing it, but I won't. And hey, this is just a really, it's a fun family event. It is. We want you to know it is a family event, although we've called it a spooktacular. <laughs> there is nothing that your kid needs to be terrified or no. scared of. It's going to be an awesome opportunity. It's going to be at our church services. Yes, in between. It's going to be those Sundays. We're going to have a, a kid-friendly message happening that Sunday. So yes. bring your kids into service. Bring me. It's going to be quick and it's going to be awesome and engaging. Great opportunity. This is a huge thing we need you to know. Mm-hmm. Great opportunity for you to invite your neighbors yes. to talk to people about this opportunity. Mm-hmm. And then this is the coolest part. We're going to head back. There's going to be uh, trunk or treating. That's going to be fun. So have your kids wear their costumes that Sunday. Yes. There's going to be lots of candy. There's going to be food trucks. Why will there be lots of candy? Oh, we'll get to that in a second. Because of the trunk or treat. I, I just said. No, no, Anyways, no, no I mean why. And, on the oh, you're right, you're right. And and there's going to be inflatables. Uh-huh. Let's go. So you're going to get to see a bunch of kids in crazy costumes going down inflatables. Oh, lots of candy. What's more exciting? I don't know. That's right. Spooktacular <laughs> happening October, <laughs> October 29th. Yes, here on a Sunday. All three services. So our focus on the fort is to people. bring candy. If yes. you're close enough, we bring need candy. candy. Send it in 5335 Bass Road Fort Wayne, Indiana 46808. And if you think we have right. enough candy, I'm telling you right now, we do not. Because Send if it. you know kids, you know, kids. You know that they can never get enough. Of I'll this be eating candy. candy too. They're candy addicts, mm-hmm. and we need to feed this addiction. We Let's do. just be honest. This is <laughs> this is the one thing that we are excited to give them, which is candy. So That's right. we need your help partnering with us because Together, candy, not too super expensive. If we don't have your help, we can't afford that much candy. That's so right. we need your help partnering with us. Send it in. Send it in. 5335 Bass Road, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46808. That's I try right. to do it as fast as possible because Caroline's going to put it on the screen and make it real oh, for them. Oh, okay. That's good. Thank you, Caroline. Thanks, Caroline. You're so special. And she's going to pop the spooktacular <laughs> slide right above Todd's head right now. Okay, cool. <laughs> and maybe a little ghost right here. Ooh, like a go. cute one, though, like so it's not cutie. spooky cutie. or scary. Cutie. She's giving me a look, so that might not happen. Yeah. But is that all we got? I think it's all we got. Man, I think this is probably my most exciting or maybe spookiest <laughs> announcements I've ever done. Well, do you want to pray us on? I would. That's not spooky. That's awesome. That's that is. spiritual. It's that God. Is. That is. It's amazing. Go so ahead. let's pray. Go ahead. Father God, we just want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for the way that you redeem everything. And so we want to be reminded of how you're even redeeming something that a lot of people look as negative in Halloween, God. We are in the desire to redeem everything towards your name, towards your mm-hmm. glory, God. And so we are so excited that we are leveraging this holiday in our world and in our nation that people are pumped about and that we could use it to bring in our community. Excellent. We could use it to love our neighbors and just mm-hmm. engage our community, God. May we not run away or shy away from things that sometimes make us go, I don't know what to do, but rather lean into it with a heart that says, I can love people through this opportunity. Yes. 
And so God allows us to do that through this holiday season, through Halloween, through all of these awesome opportunities to love people like you did. Mm-hmm. And God, we just pray right now that you would prepare our hearts for the message we're going to hear today, for the things TC is going to share with us today, and may we just be blessed by the message and your word of truth, yes. God. In your wonderful and powerful name, amen. Amen. Hello and good morning, church. My name is TC. I'm the pastor on the team here at The Point Church, and you have chosen to join us on a fantastic weekend because we're launching our new series, Mean People Scare Me, <laughs> because meanies are everywhere. They're unavoidable. You live long enough, you'll come face to face with one, and they can be terrifying. In ninth grade, I had an English teacher that we didn't quite see eye to eye. Her name was Mrs. Little, and she wasn't a fan of my goofy ways. I was always getting kicked out in the hallway for talking or telling a joke, and it didn't just end with my shenanigans in class. Like I liked engaging people, but she didn't like how I did that. Well, we had a project that we had to pick the career we wanted to pursue and study as we grew up and give a presentation on it. So naturally, I picked tattoo artist. (laughs) I had no desire, but I thought it would be funny and was denied. So I realized I'd have to be sneakier and picked a specific career in law enforcement and it got approved. So the day came to present, and I got up in front of the class, having done all the research and work required, prepared a PowerPoint to go with my presentation, and stood up. And to begin, I clicked the PowerPoint, and it read, Mooney, Texas Ranger. And then the Walker, Texas Ranger theme song kicked on behind it. The audience laughed. They engaged the whole time. They were asking questions and everything. I guarantee you that was the only presentation they really remembered that week. But uh, the grade on the presentation that I got was an 80 with a note for 20 points off for being funny. It would have been 100 if she didn't hate joy. (laughs) We've all had to grapple with some mean people. We've all had to rise up to the challenge of our rivals. We have to weather the storm to keep the grip on God's plans and dreams for us and fight to keep those alive in our lives. We've all had people that have been standing against us that we got to watch with the eye of the tiger. People that hate, critique, and drag you down in your life. They come in all shapes and sizes and use all kinds of different tactics. So what do we do about these horrible haters and constant critics? Well, the Bible gives an account of a guy that dealt with a whole gaggle of cranky, mean people. And his responses and wisdom help him not only make it through life in one piece, but position him for success and greatness. His name was David. The first time we see David, he's stuck in a field with a bunch of smelly, annoying sheep. He was the youngest person in his family in the time that the oldest person in the family was celebrated. But God saw greatness. One day, God's prophet shows up and tells David that he will be the next king of Israel. And all of a sudden, things have changed. He now had a mission. Before God showed up, David's hope for the future involved stinky sheep. But God had a purpose. He has given God had a purpose for David, and he has a purpose for each one of us. Each and every one of us are a part of the mission of helping people find and follow Jesus. And God uses our different experiences and gifts to grow us, prepare us, and use us in that mission. But sometimes we settle for our own mission. We stay with the sheep. When God gives us that majestic mission, our lives have to live for that legacy. And David made his life all about his mission, the mission God gave him to become king. God gave David opportunities, and he jumped at them. The king of Israel at the time, King Saul, needed help falling asleep. So a help wanted ad was put out for a guitarist to put the king to sleep with lovely music. So David took the opportunity to be in the palace, learning diplomacy while playing his with his sick guitar solos for the king. <laughs> Then one day, Israel faced its greatest enemy, the Philistines, and their best, most terrifying giant fighter challenged all the soldiers of Israel to a one-on-one duel. The best versus the best, but everyone was too scared to fight that massive meanie. Everyone except David. David literally ran out there and killed the giant with one blow, having zero military experience, and the ladies loved it. They started writing and singing songs about David, that cute little David, and the king got angry. He didn't like someone getting more attention than him. Now, the last man chosen by God, the current king, was a guy named Saul, and he became the number one hater of the new king, King David. There'd be times in life that the biggest enemy you face is the one person that should know better. David had to hide. He started fighting in foreign armies and slowly gathered a following of adventures and warriors that were drawn to David's mission. Godly missions 
are magnetic to both friends and foes. God has a mission for every single one of us, but any God dream will attract both support and opposition. If there's no obstacle, then your purpose probably isn't God-sized. 1 Peter 4.12 says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. If you don't have a fight, it's because you aren't even in the ring. Following God draws meanies. Following God will bring opposition, but he always gives us ways to navigate it. In the Bible, I think that we can learn some from this story of David of how to navigate the meanies of life. See, Saul's jealousy and rage against David continues to grow, and he continues to seek ways to destroy David. 1 Samuel 26, 1, the Ziphites went to Saul at Gibeah and said, Is not David hiding on the hill of Hakalah, which faces Jeshimon? See, the Ziphites here, the Ziphs would have been those people that just like to get in the middle of someone's business. You, you know what I'm talking about? The people, they like to gossip and they like to go tell other people after promising they'll take that secret to their grave. <laughs> just negative people that come looking for a problem. So so what do you do to deal with that spread? You know, the people that spread everything that you tell them, don't tell them anything, right? Let's put it this way. If you have to preface telling somebody please don't tell anyone this, then you probably shouldn't tell them in the first place. The story continues, 1 Samuel 26, 2. So Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with his 3,000 select Israelite troops to search there for David. Saul made his camp beside the road on the hill of Hakalah facing Jeshimon, but David stayed in the wilderness. When he saw that Saul had followed him there, he sent out scouts and learned that Saul had definitely arrived. Here we see our first big idea for navigating the meanies in your life. Construct healthy boundaries. David had healthy boundaries. If you read back through the account, David had already survived multiple attempts on his life from Saul. After realizing that this was a dangerous environment, David left. He went to a safer place. If every interaction you have with someone constantly ends with feeling stressed out, drained, and irritated, then it's time to put some distance there. See, my mama, she's an incredibly brilliant woman. She is a CFO at Christian colleges, a part of all kinds of boards on Christian organizations. She is just a brilliant woman. But despite all of her amazing abilities, she's always had a challenge with parking the car and getting out of parking spaces. In fact, when my sister was growing up, there was this pole that my mom would hit backing out of the driveway so regularly that my sister, when she was just little, would say, well, we hit the pole again, mommy. And this driving record continued uh, whenever we lived in Tennessee, there was this basketball pole cemented in the ground just off the driveway, and my mama would frequently check the basketball pole's integrity with a regular bump from the car. This happened in, with enough consistency that my basketball pole began to lean, which made it a very challenging game of basketball. So my dad and I got out there, tied the pole back, anchored it down, re-cemented it, and just a couple of days later, my mom backed out of the driveway into it again, and the lean was back. So we went back and added more supports and tried to help make it more resistant to the attack of my mother's car, but uh, my mom hit the pole again and there was the lean again. Then one day, uh, this continued to happen over and over, and then one day we figured out this great plan to keep my mom from hitting the basketball pole. We got rid of the basketball pole. <laughs> Can't run into it if it isn't there. See, some of us keep damaging, stressful relationships in our lives because they've been our best friend for years or they weren't always that bad. Well, it's my family. You just know how they are. But as long as you leave the basketball pole there, you'll keep running into it. You need to set healthy boundaries. Put the proper distance between you and that toxic relationship. You have to call them up and say, hey, I'm not spending time with anymore because you're toxic. But as you engage less and less, they might ask. And you'll have to share that. You're making choices to do what is healthy for you. And that means you're adjusting some of the ways you spend your time. If they get angry, it's proof that they aren't very good for you. I mean, who would get bad at somebody trying to, to be healthy? Uh, we don't always get to choose whether we can escape the mean people in our lives. Maybe your boss or teacher or coworkers are the meanies. But you can choose how you engage. You can choose how much access they have to your heart, to your life, to your emotions. I spend time praying and asking God to help me care most about what he thinks of me. Secondly, what my family and closest confidants think, and then my friends and supporters. And God, help me not to concern myself with what the meanies have to say, because they will always be disappointed. 
Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. When you can keep your distance, create space. When you can't, prepare yourself for what could happen so your emotions and heart aren't surprised and you can minimize the effect of the stress. If you keep pulling your car into the driveway with a basketball pole, though, it's going to hurt you eventually. So find a healthy way to construct healthy boundaries. Keep your distance. Secondly, in this story, we see that we need to choose healthy influences. 1 Samuel 26, 6-9, through nine, David then said to Ahimelech the Hittite and Abishai the son of Zariah, Joab's brother, Who will go down into the camp with me to Saul? I'll go with you, said Abishai. So David and Abishai went to the army by night, and there was Saul lying asleep inside the camp with a spear stuck in the ground near his head. Abner and all the soldiers were lying around him. Abishai said to David, Today God has delivered your enemy into your hands. Now let me pin him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I won't strike him twice. But David said to Abishai, Don't destroy him. Who can lay a hand on the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? See, David had this plan to sneak into Saul's camp while the army was sleeping. I'm not sure if he even knew exactly what he was going to do when he got down there to confront Saul, but he makes a brilliant decision to bring the right person with him. See, never go it alone. David knew it was unwise to deal with haters solo. (laughs) When you don't take the time to seek the wisdom of some trusted confidants of people that love God and love you, then you step into these situations raw and sensitive. And you're bound to respond in a way that gets you into a situation that you didn't have to be in. See, before I step into a stressful conversation with a media in my life, I have a couple people I call, like two. Don't go crazy and talk to 10 people about your drama because then you're just complaining at that point. But I, I want to talk to somebody to process my frustration, prepare myself for what is to come. Emotion can be debilitating and the frustration in the moment can cloud your judgment. Having wise counsel can help prevent some unnecessary mistakes. But having those wise people to talk to means filling your life with the right kind of people, giving the right amount of your time in your life to the right people that energize you and prepare you for the thrill of the fight. I believe all relationships in your life, your coworkers, your friends, your parents, bosses, your BFF, your nemesis, your one true love, your dog, all these varieties of relationship can really boil down into three categories. First, You have relationships that that are kind of like water. Uh, You know, it kind of has a neutral effect on your life. These are people that are just passing through. Acquaintances, their day-to-day decisions or thoughts don't tend to directly affect you. It's that coworker you see on the way into work and you say hi. It's that person that you sat next to in class like three years ago and you still give, you know, the the head nod thing, but don't really hang out with anymore. It's the pizza delivery guy. They're all in your life, but kind of have a neutral impact, similar to water. Now, the next beverage that represents a group is probably coffee. I mean, these are people that amp you up and energize you. Every time you finish hanging out with them, you feel encouraged and excited and can't wait to be around them again. They invest, they support, they celebrate you, and they challenge you. These are people you know are in your corner and believe in you. And that'll also tell you a hard truth when you need to hear it. And you actually listen to them. To put it simply, they caffeinate your life. You need these relationships as much as you need your morning coffee. Now, the last group of people, this last group of people are the prune juices, (laughs) the drainers, the people that hollow you out, leave you feeling empty. In case you didn't know, prune juice makes you need to go to the bathroom. (laughs) They always want to dump every emotional problem they have onto you. They always want want to know why you didn't call and why you didn't invite them to something. They're always nitpicking and judging and critiquing. These are the meanies that leave you feeling down, tired, and stressed after spending time. So let's take a moment. Think about the people you spend your time with. Does your intake lean more towards prune juice? Are you starting to see why you might be a little more drained? You know, seeking out caffeinators, it it takes intentionality. Start paying attention at church and at work and initiate conversations. Hey, hey, I would love to grab coffee with you sometime. Hey, do you want to come and catch the football game at our place? I really admire how you're following God, navigating life, succeeding in your career. Can we meet so I can ask you some questions? All of these are great ways to break the ice and begin a relationship with a caffeinator. Be intentional. And pour a little more coffee in your life. And also, it might be a good time to stop allowing all that prune juice, right? 
Don't set up that play date because all they do is complain the whole time while the kids play. Don't go out with the boys if you know how it always ends. Set the right boundaries to maximize the relationships that energize you. The last thing I want to take a look in this story is how David, David created a healthy legacy. 1 Samuel 26, 12. So David took the spear and water jug near Saul's head and they left. No one saw or knew about it, nor did anyone wake up. They were all sleeping because the Lord had put them into a deep sleep. Then David crossed over to the other side and stood on top of the hill some distance away. There was a wide space between them, and he called out to the army and to Abner, son of Ner, Aren't you going to answer me, Abner? Abner replied, uh, who, who are you who calls to the king? David said, You're a man, aren't you? And uh, who is like you in Israel? Why didn't you guard your Lord the king? Someone came to destroy the Lord the king. What, have you, what you have done is not good. As surely as the Lord lives, you and your men must die because you didn't guard your master, the Lord's anointed. Look around you. Where are the king's spear and water jug that were near his head? See, David's shouting out to the army, sharing with them, hey, I had the opportunity to end this. He, he had every reason to want Saul dead. He had the perfect opportunity to make it happen, but he didn't do it. Why? Was it because he was honoring God and his, and his anointed leader when it was difficult? Yes, absolutely. But I think it was more than that. See, I think David was wise enough to know that how he responded to Saul would set the standard for how his followers would respond to him when he was in charge. If David off the king when he was frustrated, that would establish the protocol for how frustrated followers should respond when they didn't like David's leadership. Now, evil, evil people still try to overthrow David later in his career, but how he treated Saul here brought stability to David's reign and his dynasty. I mean, look at the length of time David and his family had as king. David was king for 40 years, Solomon for 40 years, Rehoboam for 17. Abijah only had three years, ignore him. But Asa had 41 years, Jehoshaphat 25 years. A legacy was here. And compare that with the kings of Israel. And they started dealing with their leaders by assassinating them whenever they didn't like them. Zechariah led for only six months before he was killed. And the guy that killed him led for only one month. The guy that killed him led for 10 years, but his son that replaced him only led for two years before he was killed. Look at the chaos. The choices you make now, the way you respond today, it builds the culture in your life, your workplace, in your family for how to react to things when things get tough. Do they see you drop to your knees in prayer or lash out in anger? See, endurance and trust in God can breed grit and strength and metal in your life. It can be what your legacy is made of, but also your legacy can be birthed from hurt and a lack of self-control. The choice is yours. See, here, here's what I think we can learn from the life of David. If you're breathing, you can expect opposition. <laughs> if your life is about God's mission, and the way you respond to the challenges of the way that God commands through God's strengths, then the meanies can sweeten your victory rather than suck the life out of it. Let me pray for you. God, every single one of us has dealt with opposition and frustration and challenges, often from people uh, that we think should know better, and it hurts, God. But God, you allow friction, you allow resistance in order to strengthen us and prepare us for the challenges we one day will face. And God, as I look back on my life, the opposition and resistance I faced years ago seems nothing compared to the challenges that I can tackle today. It's because you care enough about us to expand our capacity, to use us for more and more. So God, I pray that we see the opposition in our life today as an opportunity to learn to trust you, to grow our grit, to, to, to prepare and strengthen ourselves for what you are going to use us for in the future. God, today's opportunities and obstacles are just chances to become prepared for what you want to do with us tomorrow. So God, I pray for everyone out there that is hurting because of others today, that they will trust and stay focused on your mission rather than their opposition. That's in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> you trying to rewind? It's wrap up. <laughs> I just can't do it. All right, yeah, it's wrap up. He's, he's wrapping it up. Wrap up. Todd, wrap, wrap it up. Wrap, no, I can't. I, I'm not <laughs> you even didn't remember any of the wrap ups. I'm, I'm not gonna beatbox or. Anything. Oh, okay. No. You're just spooky. You just oh. have an evil laugh. No, I don't so, have an evil laugh. 
to not waste more of your time. <laughs> Here's the wrap up. We love you. We love you. <laughs> and we want to stay connected with you. This is a time of giving. If you mm-hmm. call the Point Church your home, hear this. If you're new here, we're not asking anything of you. But if you call the Point Church your home, we would love for you to take this time and give. You can mm-hmm. text to give. That number's on the screen Very right now. Easy. You can also give by going to thepointchurch.net slash give. And we would just love for you to make that a part of your life. We thank you for those who are tithing, regularly giving to God, because it helps us as a church continue to follow the mission, helping people find it. And you can worship Jesus. through that. That's also yes. a form of worship to it's give back. It's an amazing way to worship. And lastly, we would just love to connect with you through the week. You can do that through our social channels, right? So Facebook, Facebook. and Instagram and even YouTube. If you want to be encouraged, hear the sermon again, hear some worship again. You hear the there. announcements again? I yes. mean, we had a blast That's today. a good point. We had, we had a blast. Had, I mean, everyone's going to be sharing about exactly. our announcements this it. week. I Don't know. you just know it? Probably we not do. the powerful, amazing message he's again. No, no. But, but our announcements. It's still sure. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. we love you guys. We hope you have an amazing Sunday, and we'll see you next week.